Welcome to episode 31 in this chess puzzle adventure series starring Bobby Fisherman, Average Joe, and Peter Potzer. Previously, two episodes back, Peter Potzer and Average Joe had failed the Fire Giant's puzzle and were sent rolling down the mountain in a barrel. When they finally arrived at the bottom of the hill at the Giant's playground, they got out of the barrel and were confronted by the Giant's brother. He said, welcome to my playground. They said, hi, uh, we were actually trying to go to the dragon's lair. Would it be okay if we just leave? He said, I don't think so. Before you can leave the playground, you have to solve one of my chess puzzle games. They're not your typical chess puzzles. They have a unique twist, and you're going to have to think outside of the box to solve these. He said, okay, what's the puzzle? He said, this is the three sunglasses chess puzzle. And with that, he presented to them three pairs of sunglasses, a pair of red sunglasses, a pair of blue sunglasses, and a pair of yellow sunglasses. He said, when you put these sunglasses on, they will display a chess position. Each one is different. Your job is to figure out which one is the winning position for white. It's white to play and win, which one wins? He said, but the catch is, if none of them are winning positions, you will have to overlap the sunglasses to create a new position. When you overlap all the pieces from one and the other combine to form one new board, you will notice that the kings are on the exact same spot on all of these sunglasses. So you won't have multiple kings. Now I'm going to have my editor throw up the three different positions on the three sunglasses, the red, the blue, and the yellow. And if you guys at home would like to pause, what do you think the winning solution is? All right, well, if you had a chance to look at that and thought through that a little bit, let's go ahead and talk about the solution. So first things first, let's take a look at the red sunglasses position. Here we go. And as you can see, even though it's white to play, there's not really much for white to do here. If you trade, you go into a losing end game. If you try to bring the queen over and attack the king, you simply get checkmated like this in two moves, so that doesn't even work, and there's really nothing here for white to do. It's just a losing position. So that was definitely not the answer. Let's jump over to the blue one. Here it's pretty straightforward. You're down the rook for the knight, you're down the exchange, and you really have nothing going on for you. Yes, you can throw in a check, but who cares? It's a losing position for white. That was also not the correct answer. If we now jump to the yellow position, again, you have uh, the rook and the bishop, black has the rook and the knight, but also an extra pawn. There's really nothing special going on here. Yes, you can probably go here, take the pawn, next move and get a draw, but you're not going to be able to win. This was also not the correct solution. All right, so let's start with the red and the yellow. So if you combine the red board and the yellow board, you would get this orange board, which also does not look good for white. There's not really much that you can do. Yeah, you have an extra rook over here, but black has uh, these extra pieces, and there's just really nothing happening. It's a losing position for white. If you combined the blue and the yellow, blue and the yellow, you would get this green position. And again, there's not really much going on here for white. Yes, you have this attack on the pawn, but it's already defended two times if you give up your knight and your bishop, that's not going to be a good endgame. And there's really nothing else here for white to do. It's also a losing position. However, if you combine the red with the blue, the red with the blue, you would get this purple position. And this is actually the winning position for white. Now, before I say anything else, I've already given you a huge clue telling you that this is the position. How do you think white can win from this position? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, some of you saw this answer immediately. It just jumped out at you. And for some of you, this will be a new tactic that you have not seen before. But it's one of my favorite tactics in chess. And I think a lot of people appreciate this one. It's called the smothered checkmate. It's a checkmate where the knight delivers checkmate on the king that's trapped by its own pieces. Now you say, how do we do that? Because if we go check now, the king simply moves over. Well, here's how it works. You need to have your queen along this diagonal. You need to have the knight able to come into f7 to deliver the check and you simply force the king over and then you move to h6 and when you go here you're creating a double check on the king this is very important because if it wasn't a double check you would simply either lose your knight or you would simply lose your queen 
But because of the double check, black actually can't take either of these pieces. You have to move your king. If you try to escape this way, you simply get checkmated right away on f7. So the only thing for black to do is go back in the corner. And if you would like to pause again, there's a mate in two from this position. If you had a chance to look at that, it's queen to g8 check. The king can't take because the knight is defending that square. So you're forcing black to capture with the rook. And now you can see what I was talking about. Black's king is totally surrounded by their own pieces. You simply jump the knight into f7, and that is checkmate. It's a beautiful, a beautiful checkmate. And when you can pull this off in a real game, it's really satisfying. So congratulations to everyone who noticed that smothered mate idea and chose the correct combination of the red and the blue sunglasses to create this winning position for white. Now, when Average Joe and Peter Potzer saw this, Peter Potzer noticed immediately the smothered checkmate. With his extremely high rating of 3,500, it was relatively easy for him. He spotted it right away, and they successfully solved the Giants puzzle. Upon completing it, the Giants said, very well, you completed the puzzle. You are free to go, unless, of course, you want to stick around and solve another one of my unique puzzles. And I'll actually send it back to you guys at home watching. Would you like to see Average Joe and Peter Potzer stick around for one more episode here? Or would you like to see them continue on in search of the Dragon's Lair? Let me know down below in the comments. And next time Average Joe and Peter Potzer come back, I'll use your feedback to determine where they go and what they do next. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, happy adventures on the chessboard.